Arrow. The tight end is Jeremy Mosley. A couple of guards to keep an eye on. Gene Benazzi and D'Amico Ryans. Second down and inches. McChesney will get the handoff. He will get the first down up to the 31-yard line. We can see Sioux Falls prepared for the run coming up. I think they had five down linemen, so it's going to be, like I said, that's the battle, Mike. In the trenches, the Sioux Falls defense has to contain McChesney, make him, you know, limit him to like 60 or 70 yards would be good, but if he breaks up for over 100, it could be a problem. Miller out route down to the bottom. That one is complete to R.E. Mills. Getting eight yards on the play brings up a second down and two. The starting defense for the Sioux Falls Sparrows defensive line, James Kelly, Jonathan Camp, and Cam Frosby. The linebackers, Jose Fuentes, Alex Parker, and Nick Fargo that Matt mentioned in his intro. Always a dynamic trio to keep an eye out for. The secondary, John Barnhart, Terrell Davis, Jay Ringgold, Nathan Barnett, and the legendary A.J. Levy. McChesney takes a handoff on second down and two and busts forward for eight, gets up to the 47-yard line and a fresh set of downs. Power back showing some good elusiveness and vision there. McChesney, again, the league's leading rusher, Mike, so it all starts and stops with him. McChesney coming into the week with a whole bunch of yards, Matt. 1,377, like you said, first place. Adding on to that right here. Look at that. Block oh, set no. Inside, inside the 30-yard line, he goes. Gets down to the 28-yard line and do oh, no. under down. Jonathan Camp down on the turf for the Sparrows. He, Sioux Falls, we have a problem. It's one of their key defensive uh, defensive linemen, and he... He just dove, Mike. He dove for McChesney. I'm hoping it's just he got the wind knocked out of him. I mean, you look, he tries to pop up, but he's like, uh, maybe not. He doesn't think he was clutching anything, so hopefully it's not serious. A key block thrown on the right-hand side by D'Amico Ryans, one of the guards that we mentioned, set up that big gain there. First down and 10 now from the 28. High formation in the backfield. Short drop for Miller, oh. and he is sacked. Brought down at the 32-yard line. James Kelly with the sack. Well, the, the DE that's not injured, Mike. That's always good. He's going to have to make <laughs> up a lot of uh, a lot for two men, but they're going to need to get pressure again, push Miller back, and make you know the passing game the focus, and so Denver can't lean on McChesney. Four sacks on the season now for Kelly. Out route up to the top is complete. Giacomo Jones getting another one. Cuts the yardage in half, third down and six. Well, Mike, we've seen out routes and we've seen runs. So my money's on another out route on third and six. Seven plays so far in this drive. Can they keep it going? Need to get to the 18-yard line for a first down. Three wide receivers on the field. Miller in the gun. Miller throws for first down yardage and more. Gets it up to the 11-yard line. Pass was hauled in by the tight end, Jeremy Mosley. Oh, Mike, I know you got to love that. I think Mosley was on a bit of a, yep, just everybody slanting, middle of the field wide open. Sioux Falls didn't have a quarter defense out there. If they only have a standard dime, that's going to be a problem. Or... First and 10 now from the 11-yard line. Watch for the off-tackle run. Oh, no. Miller's going to get it out to McChesney. Oh. arming the defender and into the end zone. Touchdown, Nightwing. I saw that happen in slow motion, Mike. You got a power back like McChesney, and you got someone try to tackle him from the side. 50-50 uh, chance he's probably going to break that tackle. Again, just a screen, and, and that's a linebacker right there, Mike, but it doesn't matter. McChesney dynamic in both the rushing and the passing game, and what a great drive for Denver to start out this game. Yeah, it was a linebacker, Matt, but it wasn't one of the – three that uh, talking about that was 
Briggs Barkowski, one of the backups. He's the backup inside linebacker on the field for that play and could not bring McChesney down as uh, maybe Jose Fuentes was taking a breather on that last snap. Resulted in a touchdown for the Night Wings. Extra point is up, and it is good. 7-0, an early lead here for Denver. Definitely something Sioux Falls did not want to see. First drive of the game, McChesney running all over them and uh, Miller being effective and efficient. Nine play, 80 yard drive. McChesney with 35 yards on three carries. Ball was spread around to Giacomo Jones and Jeremy Mosley, as well as McChesney also getting 11 yards through the air. For that touchdown pass, A.J. Levy returning the kick for the Sparrows. Gets it up to the 23-yard line, and that is where the Sparrows offense will get things going. Led by quarterback Julian Tyree. Halfback is Colin Hart. Fullback Charlemagne Cornelius. The wide receivers, A.J. Warren, Gunnar Lewis, and Al Dillapri Sr. The tight end is Noe Tarazas. And guard Dusty Wilson will help in the blocking game. Tyree oh. back on the first play from scrimmage, brought down by Marlon Marshall. Well, press man, no one got open. Pass rush got there. That's that's the thing with man coverage is if it's good, it's very hard for the quarterback to get an opening. But if it's bad, well, you could get let up a big play later down the line. So we'll have to see if Denver comes out with that look very often. Oh, and it off straight up the gut. Looks like that is uh, Cornelius. Oh, no. And, uh, well, it was Colin Hart with the carry. And, uh, yeah, in injury update. Jonathan Camp will be out for the remainder of the game. So one of the uh, stars of the defensive line for the Sparrows. He's number two in sacks for the team, and he's out for this game early in this one. Third down and five pass is incomplete, and it'll be a quick three and out for Sioux Falls. They will need to punt this one away. Well, I hate to rain on Sioux Falls' parade, Mike, but do you think this could have gone much worse for them so far? Not yet, no. I mean, it, it, to, to allow a touchdown on the opening drive, you lose one of your best defensive linemen for the entire game, and you know, you're, you're not even halfway through the first quarter and yeah. then three and out on your opening possession. Um, not, not the ideal start for the Sparrows. Is, you know they're seeking their first West Division win tonight. A fancy spin move by Quintero gives Denver good starting field position at their own 44-yard line. Josh Miller leading his team back out onto the field. And they're kind of they're going a little more risky on first down. Huh? They're gonna go for the jug, try to go for the jugular, maybe. Miller in the gun, throws a quick pass over the middle, and that one is caught. Jeez! Quick, easy pitch and catch. Jeremy Mosley with the reception now in Sioux Falls territory. It's gonna be so hard now for Sioux Falls to get pressure on. Ty, on uh, Miller, and that is key because, again, Denver has two highly paid guards, Mike. You take away one of your defensive ends, and it's going to be tough. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, Miller, uh, one of the least sacked quarterbacks, actually the least sacked quarterback in the league so far this season, Matt. He's only been sacked 10 times. Yikes. I've been sacked like eight times in a game before. I was going to say 10 times in a game, but yeah. Giacomo Jones with the catch on that out route. Good for a gain of five. And uh, just like that, Matt, they're almost already in field goal range after just two quick plays. Yeah, the Sioux Falls defense has not put up much resistance. And it better start soon. I mean, it's, I'm not saying you know it's over by a long shot, but Denver quickly goes up 14-0. It's going to be tough for a comeback. Out route to R.E. Mills oh. is complete, but only for a gain of one as he is forced out of bounds by Jose Fuentes. Set up a third down and four, and uh, 
It's kind of funny, Matt. It was second down and five from the 35. Now it's third down and four from the 35. So Must have got a half about yard. About a half yard gain there. See if they go back to the play action or if they got maybe a slant or an out. Sioux Falls playing off. Miller play action. Pump fakes, fires over the middle, oh. and that one is incomplete, trying to hit R.E. Mills. And now a decision to make, Matt, do you trot Kramer Jackman, one of the league's finest kickers, out onto the field? And it looks like maybe you do. Yes, yes. And, Mike, look at that glorious neck roll. Even kickers can wear neck rolls. <laughs> now, if you he, like knows, neck he knows roll what's so up. Much, why, uh, why do you not sport the neck roll on the field if you like it so much? I'll tell you what, I will next season. All right, sounds good. 51-yard field goal try for Kramer Jackman. He has not missed yet this season, 26 of 26. Long of 43 last week, had three field goal tries. This one from a little bit further, it's up and good. That 51-yard kick is basically a chip shot for Kramer Jackman, I think. Yeah, that had another five yards. Uh, let's, let's take a look at the trajectory. It's starting to fall, but, I mean, look at that. I mean, yeah. he hits he, he hits the net from 51. He had four or five yards left. And, All right, uh, well, maybe we'll see a 56-yarder later on in the game. Well, we, Some, yeah. Something to look forward to. 10 nothing Denver with the lead. Sioux Falls about to get the ball back for their second possession. It's a Three minor victory out. for the Sioux Falls defense as uh, they didn't at least allow a touchdown, you know. Yeah. But they have Three to get going. Three and out, yes, exactly. Three and out on their first possession. Only gained five total yards before punting. A.J. Levy taking a knee in the end zone. And this Punch Denver team, you, you think you'd want to run against them. You know, Sioux Falls was built for the run, and uh, Denver only has two high-paid linebackers and three highly-paid defensive linemen, you know, low for the SFL. The ball is handed off to Cornelius. Gains about four, but flag on the play. Offsides? Neutral zone infraction. Yeah. And it was indeed a neutral zone infraction on Marlon Marshall, who got a uh, sack on the last possession on the first offensive snap for the Sparrows. And on the first uh, snap of their second possession, he cost the team five yards. So it'll be a first down and five now from the 25-yard line. Tyree takes the snap and hands it off to Colin Hart, who is immediately wrapped up, no gain on the play. Now that doesn't just mean you should stop, though. You know, you got second down and five. I'd give Hart another chance, get this a little bit closer at least, you know, third and three, third and two if he doesn't pick it up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you talk about how McChesney is the leading rusher in the league. I mean, Colin Hart, not terribly far behind. Cornelius with that handoff there will gain one. Brings up a third down and four. But, you know, Colin Hart, Matt, he's top five in carries, top ten in yards and touchdowns as well. So, you know, expect to see plenty of, uh, of action from both running backs, both Hart and McChesney. Very interesting set on third and four. Tyree hands the ball off, but mm. cannot get there. Cornelius with the handoff once again. Gained all of the offensive yards for the Sparrows on that drive, but comes up two yards shy of the line to gain fourth and two, and they're going to have to punt once again. I don't know if I'm running the ball. I, I know if it's to Cornelius, but I would want on third and four, give it to Hart. Yeah, absolutely. I'm surprised to see Cornelius with as many carries as we've already seen so far, Matt. He's, he's only got 45 carries coming into the game, um, only 103 yards on the season, averaging about 2.3 yards per carry, whereas Hart is averaging about 4.3 yards per carry. But both of those numbers... Honestly, kind of pale in comparison to Jared McChesney, who's back out onto the field for Denver. He's second in carries, first in yards, second in average, Matt, at 5.4 yards per carry, second in touchdowns as well with 13. Having an absolutely 
fantastic season as he gets this handoff here. Busts up the middle for about 5.4 yards. <laughs> yep, hey, and if you're getting four plus, that's great on first down, second and four. They can go right back to the play action game or they could uh, give them the ball again. They can do whatever they want. Looks like uh, could be another screen to the bottom or it could be off tackle run to the top. We'll have to see. Or up. Tackle down to the bottom, and he's uh -oh. off. He race breaks his tackle, 30, 20, one man to beat, and he's tackled finally at the 17-yard line. Nick Fargo trying to put on the afterburners to catch up to McChesney. He actually did it. That's a fast linebacker, man. The good thing he brought the club with him, too, because you're not going to tackle. I mean, just shedding tackles, and Fargo comes in and says, all right, enough of this, bam. I am surprised that he was able to even catch him. <laughs> linebacker chasing down Jared McChesney from behind. It's not something that you see every day. Josh Miller now in the gun. Three wide receivers on the field. Low snap. Miller corrals it oh. in and the pass is tipped and incomplete. Batted down by Nathan Barnett. Second down and ten. Yeah, slants again. Sioux Falls defense right in the way, almost a pick. That would have been great for them. They they need they need a you know a momentum shifter here. They need something to go their way because if Denver scores a touchdown here, you know down seventy nothing in the first, it's a long way back. Miller looking to oh, throw, hit as he releases, and that one falls down the turf incomplete. James Kelly, who had a sack earlier in the ball game, getting the pressure and forcing the incompletion, sets up a third down and 10, and the Sioux Falls Sparrows defense looks like they're setting themselves up for another big stop and hoping to uh, either get a turnover or, worst-case scenario, allow Kramer Jackman back out onto the field, but... Don't count your chickens, Mike. Yeah, hoping to prevent, hoping to prevent a first down or a touchdown here. Four receivers on the field. Play action for Miller. Miller looks down to the bottom, and that one is caught. But going out of bounds after making the catch is Bryce Battle, and that will indeed bring up a fourth down. Yeah. So good job by the Sioux Falls defense again, bending but not breaking. And oh, interesting challenge here, Mike. Yeah, I'm not really sure I totally understand. It's, I thought I thought he might have been out of bounds, Matt, but I don't think it matters. Why would you risk a timeout? It's still fourth. You're gonna it's gonna be a longer, slightly longer field goal for Jackman, but for Jackman it doesn't make a difference. No, this is a field goal situation either way, no matter how this plays out. So I think he is out though. I think he yeah, I think he's out. We'll see if Jason McGee wins the challenge or not. And he does indeed win the challenge, so uh, Sioux Falls is not charged with a timeout, but um, it'll back Denver up slightly. And Kramer Jackman uh, giggles as he comes out onto the field. Yeah, he's like, well, all right. right. I guess I got to put 10% more of my 90% leg into this. Let's see. 33 yards from the right hash. Again, should be a gimme for Kramer Jackman. Kick is on the way, and it is good. And I never even saw the ball come down until after it hit the very top of the net. Thought that might have been a uh, souvenir for a fan. Yeah, he beat me to it. I was going to say souvenir souvenir day in uh, Denver. I mean, uh, it's, it, almost. It is, the, you know, those mile high winds, Mike. You know, the ball travels a little farther. So 13 nothing. Denver with the lead, but Matt, you know, not all is lost. I mean, as no, you mentioned with the Sioux Falls defense, you know, stepping up on that uh, second possession for Denver, they did so again. It, you know, it's 13 nothing, but it could just as easily be 21 nothing. You always got to watch out for uh, AJ Levy there on the return. He's Absolutely one of, the, one of the league's best kick returners of all time, Matt. You know, he's number three in the uh, league with the sheer number of returns that he's made. Also number three in the league with career return touchdowns at 10. 
But uh, number two overall all-time in kick return yardage, um, actually uh, quickly approaching 8,000 yards. Uh, he may have even had it after that last return there. Ball is handed off to Colin Hart, and he's brought down with no gain on the play. And this is, uh, I don't know why they can't open holes for, for Hart. You got a fullback. You even have a, a, you know, highly paid guard. But uh, this Denver, and here we go, Mike. Here's that press man again. Let's see if uh, Sioux Falls can break it or if Tyree's going to eat some turf. Tyree looking, throws on the run. Out route is complete up to the top and some positive yardage. And the first first down of the ball game for the Sioux Falls, Sioux Falls Sparrows. Hale Dillapri Sr. with the catch, moving the chains. Yeah, unlike me yesterday, bumbling, fumbling around, there's some good footwork by Tyree, avoiding the pressure, getting the ball to Dillapri for the first down. I need new cleats, Mike, I swear. You looked a little discombobulated on the field. Maybe, Matt. maybe it was the margarita I had at half nup. <laughs> <laughs> I tried warning you about that. You got to learn to control your intake. Tyree steps oh, up no! as he tries to throw, and he is sacked. Brought down back at the 29 yard line, and a little taunting coming from Des Troyer, the defensive tackle. I thought Tyree was going to get rid of this ball, and he didn't unfortunately and now he's kind of put the sparrows in a bit of a jam does troyer he, wreaking havoc in the backfield all season long matt 12 and a half sacks for him now number three in the league and that sets the sparrows back to a second down and 15. tyree looking to get that first down and oh, one shot and oh. he does it ball is complete to gunner lewis in denver territory and the second first down of the ball game for the Sparrows comes on a second and 15. I'm going to say, paging one of the receivers, we need a big play. Well, there we go. Sitting in the pocket with Tyree, nice and calm, and delivers a strike. And uh, Sioux Falls in business now. They are uh, in Denver territory. All they need is, you know, 10 yards to get in field goal or less than to get the field goal range. But I'm um, Sioux Falls, I want seven. Tyree, short drop, out route down to the bottom Ooh. and finds his target who is out of bounds. That was Noe Terrazas, the tight end with the catch, but it does not count. Second down and 10. It seemed like the timing was off. That play should have worked, but uh, I don't know if it was Tyree's throw or Terrazas' footwork, but an opportunity missed. And now second down and 10. Get to the gun. Hmm. Four wide receivers on the field for the Sparrows. Tyree looks, fires deep down the middle, oh! hits his target, and all the way down to the six-yard line. Gunner Lewis once again with the big catch, and that will bring us to the end of quarter number one. So the Nightwings lead 13-0 after one quarter of play. But Sioux Falls knocking on the door. See if they can get a score to open up quarter number two. First and goal from the six after we flip sides of the field. Tyree hands the ball off. Colin Hart running up the middle. You know what, Mike? It didn't look like a spectacular run, but I liked it. Hart got stopped, found an opening, got a couple yards, and that's exactly what you need. If he has three more runs like that, it's a touchdown. So I'd feed him again. Or, you know, Sioux Falls was always famous for their swing pass. That would be a good time to bust it out, especially looking at them all clumped together. Second and goal from the three. Ball handed off. Oh! Hart once again tried to break Jeez. through. Couldn't get there. Third and goal now from the two. Boy, I thought he had it at the one, Mike. I don't know. That's I, yeah. The, <laughs> that's, a, that's a bad spot. I thought, well, I thought he was about to break through and you know, good play by the Denver defense to wrap him up. Tyree hands the ball off to Cornelius. Cornelius goes nowhere. It's now a fourth down and goal from the two. Adam Wiseman with the tackle, and they'll actually spot that one for a loss. 
And the field goal unit will come out onto the field. Maxwell Falk for what's uh, basically an extra point try. Just uh, shifted over to the right hash mark. I'd be so t- I'd be tempted to go for it, but I would do. Yeah. yeah, you know maybe you get a safety if you don't convert it, but. Yeah, the O has got to go. Extra point is, excuse me, the field goal is up and good from 19 yards. <laughs> Looked like an extra point, but that one counts for three. Getting rid of that zero, putting some points on the board at least for the Barrows. And Falk gets the ball teed back up. Kick it back off to the Nightwings. You know, Matt, they allowed a touchdown on the first possession, but you know was able to get uh, two defensive stops on possessions two and three as... You know, Denver was held to only field goals. So, you know, maybe, uh, you know, getting that field goal on the board, now you're able to uh, hopefully, oh, wow. you know, obviously it's much better starting field position this time around as Denver starting at their own 18-yard line instead of, uh, I think, on their second possessions, they started at uh, their own 44. So, um, you know, now uh, if the defense is able to step up, you know, they could maybe finally force a punt. Ah, look from- at that average. Boy, you give him a, give him a carry and he gets... 15 yards. Yeah, I'd give him a carry. So first down and 10 from the 18. McChesney oh. Oh, rushing right through the middle. Matt, he took Nick Fargo for a bit of a ride before A.J. Levy came in to clean up. Well, Can't Mike, if it, wasn't, if it wasn't for Levy, he would have had a first down. But that's the danger is uh, McChesney's getting to the second, third level too quickly. You know, he, this, these aren't two-yard gains. These are major gashes. McChesney takes a handoff on second down. Oh. The blocking is just absolutely incredible, Matt. And McChesney just this. stiff-armed Jose Fuentes into the ground. This trio of linebackers you refer to, Matt, just neither neither Fuentes or Parker could do uh, anything on that last play. Yeah, McChesney is just... Just a beast right now. Play action now. Miller, quick pass over the middle, and that one is caught. What a nice catch by Riley Quintero getting up to the 49-yard line. And we saw Sioux Falls and some, they were up on the line, and I think they were a man, and uh, play action kind of bit him in the butt there. And uh, that was a nice catch and grab. From a Quintero, I mean, the Sioux Falls, these got to step up. They can't be trading field goals, Mike. They're not going to win that way. Agreed. Three receivers split out wide to the bottom. Play action once again. Another quick pass over the middle. And another quick first down for the Nightwings. Quintero with another catch and another first down. Again, more press man and... Without, you know, their Sioux Falls is missing one of the defensive ends. If they don't get pressure, it, the coverage is going to fall apart. Offset eye formation in the backfield. Miller to throw gets it out to McChesney. McChesney with another fierce stiff arm, oh. just throwing Fuentes down. Nick Fargo to the rescue, though. Yeah, how many times has McChesney got hit hard? Like it's like he hits a Sioux Falls player, and then a Sioux Falls player comes in with some, you know, brass knucks and hits him. So this is a, a kind of a heavyweight matchup between the Sioux Falls defense and the and McChesney. Someone Miller in the gun out. on second down and six. McChesney open at the top, but instead oh. he throws it right into the hands of Fuentes, who's not able to take that one away. That would have been a Big momentum shifter for the Sparrows. Third down and six. I was it was going to spool up my comment about the dynamic line banking trio. I mean, good job by Fuentes still, but man, if he had come away with that ball, so big, big momentum shift for the Sparrows. So third down and six, right on the outskirts of field goal range. If the Sparrows can get a stop, Miller. Quick pass over the middle. Oh. The stop not to be hauled in by Giacomo Jones. First down at the 14-yard line inside the red zone. And now the beast is fresh, Mike. McChesney's lurking. You're, you're, 
inside the red zone. It's time to feed him some carries. McChesney, seven carries, 93 yards already on the day. Also has 15 yards receiving with a touchdown. Miller looks, throws up to the top. R.E. Oh. Miller, touchdown, Nightwing. R.E. Mills. Who the fuck, Mike? They know that. <laughs> oh, back with their third touchdown on the season, Matt. Receiving they're, touchdown, that is. They're thinking McChesney. Look at Mills. There's no one out there. Finally, one of the linebackers tries to get out there. Fuentes, but he can't He can't get to Mills in time, and Mills walks into the end zone. And Right now, it seems like Denver can do no wrong on offense. Six more points on the board for the Night Wings. Extra point try coming up. Extra point by Jackman is up and good. If you are new to the SFL, the Simulation Football League combines traditional e excuse me, traditional sports, esports, and a role-playing game into one. Team strategies are being executed in real time by our simulations as real life players compete on the virtual gridiron for more information about the sfl you can visit our all-new website simulationfl.net the sfl puts the fan in fantasy aj levy takes it out of the end zone and returns it up past the 20 yard line finally brought down at the 23. Hubba K. Breezy in the chat, Matt, says hashtag throw it to the fullback. Isn't that something, though? <laughs> I remember, uh, I think we coined that phrase a few games ago. <laughs> well, when it works, it looks like genius. When he bobbles the ball and drops it, you look foolish. So that play, it looked genius. <laughs> it sure did. Hashtag throw it to the fullback. Why not? Got it done there. Julian Tyree throws the oh. ball up to the top. And that one is hauled in. I believe that was L. Dillapri Sr. Yes, it was, with the uh, catch in the first down. <laughs> Tyree doing something you're not supposed to do, throwing across your body, legs not planted, but manages to get the ball there. He's going to have to step up. You know, you're down 20-3. to three. It's a big hole. There's a lot of game left, but Sioux Falls needs big plays. Colin Hart not on the field here on first down and 10. Tyree to throw. Quick pass is caught. Gunner Lewis with the catch up at midfield. Three catches, 81 yards now for Lewis. Maybe that's someone they should be targeting more. Lewis seems to be uh, getting open in the coverage. I mean, look at that. That's just a, that's just a giant window for Tyree to throw the ball into. And First and 10 now from midfield. Ball is handed off to Hart. Ooh. Hart is able to scoot up the middle and gain five on the play. That puts him over 1,000 yards on the season now. I'm like, I don't think he's had a clean hole to run through. Even there, he had to kind of... Move, you know, put his hand on the lineman to get by. This Denver Nightwing defense is going to do a good job of filling up those holes. Ball is handed off to oh! him once again. This Bye -bye. time he's off to the races. He's got a clear path to the end zone. Touchdown, Sparrows. Well, right hard on to cue, Matt. He, oh, he said he had, oh, didn't have a good oh lane. Good there Lord. you go. <laughs> Too, he said, too oh, bad yeah? just got destroyed, like imploded into the black hole of nothingness right there. Bam, bam. Good blocking the rest of the way. And then Harsh saying, hey, McChesney, I can uh, I can do it too. And that is big time for the Sioux Falls Sparrows. Now they Absolutely. can get within 10. 45-yard rushing touchdown for Colin Hart. Touchdown number nine on the season for him right after – Eclipsing the 1,000-yard mark, Matt, he's able to punch through a 45-yard rushing touchdown. 
High snap is corralled in. Extra point is up and good. And the gap is closed back to 10 points. The uh, Sparrows and Nightwings met in Sioux Falls earlier on in this season, Matt, all the way back in January. Denver coming away with the victory in that one, 33-7. So Sioux Falls already putting more points on the board than they did back in that week, uh, well, the er earlier season uh, loss to the Nightwings. This is the sixth matchup between the two teams. Sioux Falls actually... Leads the uh, leads the matchup history, Matt. Three wins over uh, Denver's two wins. You know, and you can't judge very much by a week one game. Teams are still trying to get their uh, their playbooks together, work out the bugs. Also, th note that the same Sioux Falls team beat the very good Florida Storm twenty four to sixteen. And the most impressive thing, Matt, is that you actually called them the Florida Storm. McChesney Good. takes a hand off. <laughs> well, Sorry, Mike, when I, I can read it, don't, when, I, when I can read it, I don't have to go up to, after memory. See, it was so smooth, you thought I was pulling it out of my head, but no. I just <laughs> McChesney hitting triple digits on the ground with that carry. Rushing now, forward Mc, for another oh, first down. McChesney hammered again, Mike. He hey, keeps he, popping back up, though. Yeah, what if he's got one of those double helmets? You remember those? <laughs> They're supposed to prevent concussions, but I think they just made it worse. It's entirely possible. Four receivers on the field for the Nightwings. Play action. Miller, quick pass over the middle, and that one is caught. Hauled in for a gain of nine. R.E. Mills getting involved once again. We've seen plenty of R.E. Mills action so far in this one. Matt, last week. Mills, seven carries, 46 yards. Also had two receptions, but only for a uh, grand total of four yards. Mills, no carries yet, but four catches for 32 yards and a touchdown already in this one. And a quick handoff to McChesney there is good for a first down. After a game <laughs> his of shortest two. run of the game. It was his shortest run of the game, but he, he got what he needed on that one. Right. And that's how McChesney sets up this offense, Mike. When you can get four to five yards on first down, you can run those play action plays and for five or six, keep your quarterback safe. You don't have to bomb it down the field. Miller under center play action. Open target down at the bottom. Giacomo Jones with his fifth reception. Good for a gain of eight. And again, no pressure. McChesney or uh, Miller just finds the open man, and uh, I think, yeah, not not now. Maybe they'll unleash McChesney, and yeah, lo looking like that's the case. What backs in the backfield on second down and two? McChesney takes the handoff oh. and is able to fall forward for the first down. I thought the Sparrows might have him wrapped up. Behind the line to gain, but able to get just enough. First down and 10 now from the Sioux Falls 45-yard line. And again, the play action set up the run, Mike. If that's, you know, well, let's say a third and five, well, it doesn't work. But because they gained so much on first down, that's been the key. Denver right now has been consistently winning on first down five yards or more. Sioux Falls has to stop that. Play action once again from the Night Wings has been working well for them. Oh, and geez. McChesney breaks through a tackle and... Gets oh, about gosh. 15 on the play all the way up to the 30-yard line. And Matt, they had him at the line of scrimmage, but he's able to slip through. Yeah, just uh, out of time. Miller running out of time, and he jumps it off, and then expect the tackle to be made, but no. And nobody near McChesney, and he gets whacked again by a Sioux Falls Sparrow. But again, winning on first down. That'll bring us to the two-minute warning. Denver marching right along at the 30-yard line, already in field goal range, looking to keep piling on points in this one. Over-under is 47.5 uh, points, Matt. We already have 30 points in this ball game. McChesney... Oh. Trying to reverse Wait, field and the Sparrows take, take full advantage of that. 
Only a loss of two after James Kelly gets the tackle for a loss. I thought that was going to be a loss of a whole lot more. I didn't know what planet he was on, Mike. I didn't even see McChesney. He's surrounded by Sparrows. They only lost two, but uh, again, that's a win. So Sioux Falls, or Denver does not win on first down. Let's see if uh, Sioux Falls defense can keep him bottled up here in that second. Uh -oh. Chesney off tackle to the right with great blocking out in front. He's able to gain about, uh, excuse me, about uh, eight on the play. Third down and four after picking up the two yards that he lost and tacking on another six. So let's see. Uh, oh, hurry up mode. Third down and four, minute to go in the first half. Miller fires over oh. the middle, and that is well defended, swatted down by Jose Fuentes. And that'll bring up a fourth down, and Kramer Jackman coming back out onto the field for yet another field goal try. Good job by Fuentes, just getting it, reaching his paw out, batting that down. And, uh, I mean, Sioux Falls has got a chance. It's not a lot of time, but they do have three timeouts. Maybe if... Uh, Leave, he can get a good return. Uh, that would, you know, maybe to the 40 would set up Sioux Falls to try to try to answer back with a field goal of their own, but one thing at a time. Yeah, one thing at a time, but it, it definitely would behoove them to uh, to attempt to get some more points on the board. They do get the ball back to start the second half. So if they can even get a field goal now and maybe a touchdown coming out of the uh, halftime break, ex excuse me, field goal is up and good. They could at least uh, cut this back down to only a three-point game if things are able to go their way. Or even less if they're able to get a touchdown, get the ball back, get another touchdown. Could That's only a two-touchdown game, so it's not yeah, absolutely. still two possessions. So what Two Falls needs to do here, though, is try to move the ball. I know it's a little risky. You don't want to give up an interception, but, I mean, you gotta, you're, you're up against Denver 9-1. You just got to go for it. Well, well, it's going to come back out to the 20 as Levy kneels this one down in the end zone. Tyree coming out onto the field. Matt, he's only got five completions so far in the ball game through two quarters of play. 106 yards uh, passing, most of which have gone to Gunnar Lewis. And we've seen a couple catches out of Al Dillapri Sr. as well. Only one wide receiver on the field with 56 seconds to go. The ball is handed off to Colin Hart. Hart's able to get another nice gain. Runs for nine, but no timeouts called, and they're not going into the hurry up. I would have called a timeout right there and got the got the shotgun out. He got nine yards. Good enough for me to try to take another shot. Maybe they'll give it to Hart again. He can bust a can bust a big gain, and then they'll. I mean, let's have to see. Out in a running formation once again. We'll see what happens if he's able to pick up a first down here. Hart does indeed get the first down, and they'll go oh, into the Oh, time out. Up. Time out. Yeah. 20 seconds yeah. and counting. Tyree back under center, hands the ball off to Hart once again, who's able to gain a couple yards. And we'll see if we even get another snap. Gunnar Lewis, out. the only receiver on the field. They do oh, call a yeah. timeout. With three seconds to go and uh, questionable clock management, Matt, um, out of Hail Mary formation, so I'm not sure well, I don't what, know do what you think this next run. play will be. Call me crazy, but it might just be a run, Mike. I don't know. There's a, it seemed like there's miscommunication there, and I would have called the timeout as soon yeah. as you got the big run from Hart. Now you're at three seconds to go, and I don't know if there's a play in the playbook you can run to, I mean, all everybody just go, everyone streak, and... Uh, but, I mean, it looks like a run. Yeah, it looks like a run. You know, it looked like Tyree was getting an earful from uh, head coach Jason McGee. Tyree back under center now, second down and eight. Three seconds to go in the first half. And it's just a handoff to Colin Hart. Not able to run 40, what, 56 yards to the end zone. Hey, he had would have been impressive as we see a halfback comparison. And that takes us into halftime. Your score at the half, the Sparrows 10, Nightwings 23. The Sparrows will get the ball back to start the second half of action. 
But first, the halftime show. We'll look at the first half stats and highlights. And Matt, what stands out to you the most? Well, look at the first downs, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, again, I, I've said it before, but Denver winning on first down, getting five yards or more, is killing Sioux Falls because then it just sets up Denver's play action game. They can run McChesney again. Uh, so what Sioux Falls has to do is limit them to like three or less on first down, make Denver go a little bit deeper in their playbook. Yeah, it, 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 if, if I recall correctly, Matt, Sioux Falls didn't even see their first first down until their third possession, uh, which is when they ended up going on a 10-play, 76-yard drive, but it only resulted in a field goal, but at least it was getting some points on the board. The Denver Nightwings actually number one in the league on defense and first downs allowed. They've only allowed 155 first downs all season long. You know, to put that in perspective, compare it to Sioux Falls, they've allowed over 200. They're 19th in the league. So the uh, the Nightwings defense, definitely a difficult one to get first downs on. Difficult team to score against as well. You know, they've, uh, they've had a fantastic season all the way through. They're Top five in multiple categories, top ten in numerous categories as well. Top five in points allowed, rush yards allowed, total yards allowed, passing touchdowns allowed, first downs allowed, third down conversion percentage. Uh, top ten in basically every other category except for takeaways, where they're at 18th. Otherwise, uh, top ten defense all around. So. Ben All Denver in this one. They started off nine play, 80 yard drive, 11 yard passing touchdown. Sioux Falls would go three and out. Denver would come back, five play, 21 yard drive with a field goal. Another three and out for the Sparrows, followed up by a six play, 44 yard drive with a field goal for Denver. Sioux Falls would finally get some points on the board. We mentioned it earlier, Matt, the 10 play, 76 yard drive, resulting in a field goal. Denver would have a, uh, another touchdown drive, only uh, two plays, 35 yards, getting it into the end zone. Two falls, another touch. Oh, excuse me, their first touchdown drive of the ball game would be a four-play, 77-yard drive, a 45-yard rushing touchdown from Colin Hart. But adding on three more points before the half, to play 55 yards, another Kramer, Kramer Jackman field goal. And now Kramer Jackman kickoff to A.J. Levy. He'll take this one out four yards deep in his own end zone. Trying to add on to that historic career kick return yardage total. Now over 8,000 kick return yards on his career. And we'll see if the Sparrows can get something going here to start the second half. Kind of crucial you know, I, I know it's only a two-possession game, Matt, but crucial to try to get something going here. They've only had two scoring drives, one for three and one for seven. Colin Hart getting the handoff, getting things going with a three-yard carry. First half numbers, Matt, he had 77 yards on the ground. No receptions. We haven't seen him or yeah. Charlemagne Cornelius used in uh, you know, any sort of passing situations. And I think a lot of that is, you know, they had a couple short yard situations. They gave it to Cornelius instead of Hart, and I think that's a mistake. Ball's handed off to Cornelius, and he's able to gain quite a bit of yardage as he surges forward up to the 38-yard line. Don't I look silly? <laughs> Straight fullback dive up the middle. But you know what? Great blocking, Mike, and that's something that Hart did not enjoy very much of it, except really on that long run he had for a touchdown. First and 10 now for the Sparrows. And that ball is handed off to Hart. He's only going to go for a gain of two in Matt since uh, Sparrows had a couple of quick possessions on the opening series. We never ran through the Denver Nightwing starters on defense. The defensive How line, Marlon you. Marshall, I know. Michael Rochester and Des Troyer are the defensive linemen. Linebackers are Adam Wiseman and Echo Love. The secondary is Matt Papineau, Nick Kindler, Rosca Santagria, Josh Vasquez, and Maurice Lloyd. That run goes for a gain of another two. Colin Hart 
Averaging 5.8 yards per carry, Matt. A little deceiving. Most of that is the 45-yarder that he had. Does set Sioux Falls up, though. Third and six is not the worst possible scenario for them. They can just run something quick to the outside. And here we go. They're Denver's jamming in. So Hardy's got to see who's open on this man coverage and find him. Trying to keep the drive alive. Oh, no. but the pass is tipped and incomplete. Well defended by Rosca Santagria. Swatting that one down to the turf, and that's going to bring an end to the drive. Fourth down and six, well out of field goal range, and the Sparrows, Max Molholt, coming out onto the field to punt this one away. Not the start you want if you're Sioux Falls. I mean, even a field goal would have been something, but... Uh, well, man, you know, now the defense is going to have to come back out on the yep. field. They need to help the offense out. You know, they need to try to get some turnovers. You know, they, right along with Denver, uh, both tied with 18 takeaways, which puts them both tied in 18th place in the league. So neither neither team really uh, heavy in the turnover game on defense, but uh, they're going to going to need to try to get something here. Josh Miller comes back out onto the field. He's thrown 17 picks this season, Matt, but that's actually fourth best in the league. You know, through uh, 10 weeks of play, it's averaging less than two picks. Oh. Yeah, two picks per game, and a defensive lineman jumps off sides. I, I swear this. I've seen, I've seen more of that this weekend than I've ever seen before. At the end of the season, everyone's getting jumpy, I think. And James Kelly called for the offsides. Penalty will be accepted. It'll be a first down and five now from the 30-yard line. And not, not what the Sparrows defense needed to uh, try to get this, this uh, next oh, possession they, stopped. They've got McChesney down to under a first down and carry. That's a good start. <laughs> the... Uh, Presumptuous MVP candidate for season 16, Jared oh, McChesney. There goes that. And that's uh -oh. why crushing through one tackler uh. and breaking through his second. A.J. Levy finally bringing him down at the 40-yard line in Sioux Falls territory. I thought that was a touchdown for sure. A.J. Levy, the only thing stopping it. And yeah, Levy again bringing the hammer, but uh, another shot by McChesney. I swear he's got like an airbag helmet. You know, it deploys as he's falling to the ground. Well, that would have that would have deployed several. <laughs> several well, you know, times he has to get a new helmet time. every time. You know, he's, a, he's got a, he's got a lot of money. <laughs> every snap, our out up to the oh. top, and that one is good for another first down as well. I like that the nice quick out pass, and then turning up field, Jeremy Mosley, the tight end, getting it done. Working on his fo footwork on the uh, in practice for sure. Just like yeah. that, they're at the Sioux Falls 30. I don't know how you answer this attack right now. Offset eye in the backfield, and they will throw. Miller steps up into the pocket and finds his target wide open, getting down to the four-yard line. Once again, Jeremy Mosley with back-to-back -back receptions. First down and goal now from the four. Yep, just... Uh... Line up in the slot, running towards the sidelines. And uh, again, just so close to a touchdown. But when you got McChesney in the backfield from the four yard line, I would say you've got only one option run, run, run. McChesney with almost 150 yards on the ground, but no rushing touchdowns. Can he get one here? He can mm. into the end zone for another Denver touchdown. What blocking? <laughs> Adding on to his season total, that is rushing touchdown number 14 for McChesney. He's also got three receiving touchdowns throughout the season. Has almost 400 yards receiving, Matt. He has over 1,400 yards. Gosh, almost. Actually, he's got over 1,500 yards now. Yeah, the, the, the odometer is picking up. Unfortunately for the uh, opponent, it's not like a car that's going to break down. That odometer is just going to keep going. 
Extra point is up and good. Now a 20-point lead here in the third quarter. You can keep up with the SFL and its teams on social media at Simulation FL. Follow us on Twitter for weekly broadcast schedules to discover team content and stay up to date on SFL news. Let us know who your favorite team is or how you enjoy the broadcast each week with the hashtag make an impact. Thank you for your support and your viewership. Jackman kicking this one off to Levy standing about five yards deep. And he will take another knee. We've so, seen Levy taking plenty of knees in the end zone uh, for touchbacks in this one. Matt Jackman pretty regularly kicking it deep. Think about it, Mike. How do you build a great running game? Well, you got a great power back in McChesney. What does a power back like to do? Run up the middle, right? So you get him a blocking fullback. Oh, yeah, let's add two star guards, too, and a tight end. Sounds like a good recipe for success. Ball is handed off to Hart. Able to gain five on the first snap of this possession. Nick Kindler with a tackle. Second down and five. You sound exasperated, Matt. It's a good gain. I just don't think it's enough. Two falls, it's like it's abandoned the shotgun, and they need it now. Cornelius with the carry. That time sets up a third down and five. Our uh, stat guy, Easter Bunny Moonlighter, Gerald Smith, pointing out that Sioux Falls has yet to convert a third down. They're 0 and 4. Well, let's, let's see if they can start it right here, Mike. It's, it's a new start. Tyree pump fakes and gets oh. this one away, but it's incomplete. Well defended. And another third down will go unconverted. Attempting to hit Tourain James. And yeah. that one will fall down to the turf. Another fourth down coming up. I would say, Mike, it's very hard to win a game when you can't convert a third down. Yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 yes, it's definitely it's uh, definitely difficult to convert when assuming to win when you're zero and five on third down, and um, you know, a couple other problems that play into it as well, Matt. They they've been struggling to just even get first downs at all, whether it was on first or second down. Obviously, they have not gotten a uh, first down if they hit that third down mark, but also uh, you know another factoid from Mr. Gerald Smith is uh, that Denver has scored on every single possession, whether it be oh. a field goal or a touchdown. They have not yet had a possession where they've had to to punt the ball away. They have not had a turnover. Lily Long, the, uh, the most bored punter in the league as she sits on the sidelines, just watching her team continue to put up points. Sorry, I'm sure everyone's just fanning around the sidelines, just enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> Miller out route up to the top. <laughs> Ouch, punishing hit. You know, we've seen some big hits from this Sioux Falls defense. Matt John Barnhart just absolutely laying the lumber on Giacomo Jones, but the big hits have not not uh, been enough. Oh, again, what have I said, Mike? Winning on first down, there's six yards. So now, now, now the pass game is set off McChesney for a run, and, well, he's definitely averaging more than four yards a carry. Second and four after that six-yard reception from Jones. Miller under center. More play action and another quick pass over the middle to everybody's favorite fullback, R.E. Mills. Hashtag throw it to the fullback. Gets it up to the 40-yard line. Another first down for the Nightwings. Yeah, it, um... I don't know what else to say, Mike. They just, Denver can't make a mistake. I mean, Miller's been sacked once or twice. Once, I think. Once. Or twice. Once, but, I mean, there's not much negative to say. What, they took a field goal? Oh, boy. And another flag bye on bye. the play, but McChesney off to the races. A.J. Levy says no. Uh, Bye-bye, Matt. Gets the tackle. But it'll be all the way down to the 10-yard line. And then another neutral zone infraction on the Sparrows. This one will be declined. Cam Frosby 
the offender. Look at the blocking, Mike. Yeah, Mills just Mills. takes out the defender. You might want to call him Win Mills because he just knocked that guy down to the ground. Blocking has been fantastic. Gosh, McChesney's average has got to be. I mean, if he scores a touchdown here, he's going to ruin his average. <laughs> he is averaging over 12 yards per carry. So Miller will help him out and throw oh. into the end zone. One-handed touchdown. Decker with the catch, getting a little bit of everybody involved. Now, Matt, that's the backup tight end, R.J. Decker. Getting a one-handed catch in the end zone for a touchdown, and the Nightwings are just running away with this one. Like, you know what's going well when the Decker unit scores. That's right. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. little Star Trek reference there, Matt. Yeah, I, I'm sure only I, you and I got that one. <laughs> if anyone else knows what, what movie that one came from, post it in the chat. Twitch.tv slash FTF next. Low snap for the extra point, but Jackman gets it up and through anyway. 37 to 10. The lead here in the third quarter. The SFL broadcast team is looking to add new talent to our ranks of broadcasters. I'm actually actively looking to replace my color commentator. Applications are being accepted now to try out for either play-by-play -play or analyst broadcast positions. No prior experience is required. You just got to love the SFL and uh, want to succeed in broadcasting. The application can be found on our website, simulationfl.net slash broadcasting. And, Matt, I'm kidding. You can stay forever and ever. A.J. Levy returning this one uh, out to the 24-yard line. And that is where the Sparrows will take back over on offense, Matt. They've had two possessions now here in the second half, and both have ended with punts. In fact, their last three possessions have ended without any points. And last, Mike, we've got, a, we've got a winner in the chat. Star Trek, the motion picture. Add a boy. Hog fan James gets the, uh, gets the trivia question correct. Tyrese passes swatted down into the turf. Second down and 10. Yes, indeedy. The, uh, the original Star Trek, the motion picture. Is where the Decker unit reference came from. Matt digging deep into the archives. Uh, yeah, deep into the for relevant commentary now. <laughs> Let's see what other fun ones you can find throughout the rest of the game, Matt. Second down and 10. Ball is handed off to Hart. And Hart is only able to gain one. We'll set up a third down and nine. Like I, I don't know. I'm just I'm amazed by Denver's defensive game plan. Like again, they have they don't have as many stars as you would think on the on the front end of the line, but the back end is where they're you know two cor three corners and two safeties. But they've made it work and they've neutralized this rushing attack. Four receivers oh. set and Tyree hit as he tries to throw, and that'll put an end to that drive. Applying the pressure, Michael Rochester. Breaking up that pass, almost getting the sack. And another third drive, third down goes unconverted. Ah, poor Tyree. He's looking like Charlie Brown out there on third down. He's been uh, he's been absolutely blasted. It's not his fault, man. It's just like, duh. And the punt is away. Quintero calls for the fair catch at the 42-yard line. And even up 27, we'll see Josh Miller coming back out onto the field to uh, continue to add on the stats. Yeah. I mean, it seems like once Sioux Falls lost their, one of their defensive starters, it was just, it was like the, you know, predicting how the rest of the game would go for the defense. Miller, pump fakes, gets that one out. All in. I believe that was Bryce Battle with the catch. I mean, I mean, look, when you got Miller throwing the ball around like that, three touchdowns, no picks, and then you got McChesney running the ball the way he is, I mean, you've got both ends humming like a well-oiled machine, and 
going into the playoffs, that's a scary proposition. Running formation now on second down. McChesney already has carried the ball 15 times, make that 16, and he's off to oh, the race. No. Once again, 30, 21 man to beat, and he gets tackled at the 13-yard line. McChesney just absolutely piling on the yards, Matt. That one put him over 200. Why not go for 300? I got that, that, that same might run. happen. That's it might same. happen. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to touch uh, – Darno Black's record. I think he had 400 yards in a game. That was crazy. But McChesney's performance. There's still I 14 mean, minutes left, man. I know. I mean, they're gonna the backups could come in in the fourth at some point. But I mean, there's still a lot of time for McChesney to work. I might not throw it to him too. It's a swing route. Oh, and good for a gain of five. The defense showing their frustrations as Jay Ringold levels him once again. And again, I'm not I'm not taking, you know, all respects to Sioux Falls. I'm not taking right. shots at anybody. It's just you know, I always root for a close game and this is it's just frustrating sometimes. You just so get so close and then you you know, sometimes your game plan just doesn't work out. Three receivers on the field now. Miller fires to oh. that one's batted down and incomplete. Good defense from the secondary. Nathan Barnett getting in there. Like, he is human. He does bleed. <laughs> he can throw an incompletion. You know, he has thrown his share of incompletion so far in this one, Matt. 20, 23 of 30. No I guess they were, they, they, you know, they've been so infrequent, like not not in a row, that I just, they just kind of blur into one incompletion. Haven't noticed. Yeah. Third down and five now for Denver. Miller steps up. Checks it down to McChesney, and he'll actually lose a yard. Brings up a fourth down and six. But not to fear, Denver fans. Kramer Jackman out for his fourth field goal try. I guess I can say criticize, criticize Denver's play calling there a little bit, Mike. And Not a run to McChesney on either of those plays. I would have given him a try, but you know what? I don't know. Maybe they're just trying some things out for the playoffs as they're they're going to clinch the number one seed, I would think. Yeah, that has been confirmed with a win. They will clinch the number one overall seed in the playoffs. And putting 40 points on the board, we have uh, well exceeded the over-under, and it looks like Denver will come away with a win in this one. I hate to call a game with a minute and a half to go in the third quarter, but <laughs> Sioux Falls has just absolutely struggled on offense today, and uh, Denver showing why they're nine and one. You know, you, Matt, you talked about in your opening, you know, yeah. the strength of uh, strength of schedule, strength of victory. You know, the Sparrows, you know, number two most difficult strength of schedule so far. Their, uh, you know, the, their opponents have won about sixty percent of their games, and uh, you know, for Denver. They've had literally the easiest. You know, their opponents are a combined record of 36 and 67. But, I mean, that that's not to discount how they've gotten to 9-1. and one. I mean, we've seen no. the offense firing on all cylinders. And, uh, you know, it may have, oh, been an easier, may have been an easier path than some other teams have had to take. But, you know, I think you could give them the most difficult schedule in the league. And Jared McChesney would still say, all right, well, let me see what I can do. And. You know, uh, Josh Miller would continue to, you know, be efficient on offense. And, I mean, he's got three passing touchdowns, no picks. And that's that's kind of par for the course for him so far, you know, this season. Well, it doesn't matter. You throw out the window, Mike, because the great equalizer is always the playoffs. You're, you're going to play the best teams. I mean, you really find out how good you, really, you are. The thing with Denver, though, is they're going to have home field throughout, which is an advantage. Absolutely. But let's see how they do against, you know, Alaska – Against, well, Baltimore. Against, against who? <laughs> I didn't know we had a team in Alaska, Matt. Ah, oh, strikes again. <laughs> I, had, I had to do it. My, my, fired. My, fired. Fired. <laughs> we do, Mike. They're oh. undefeated. They haven't, they haven't played the season. They're undefeated. Colin Hart able to convert the first third down of the night for the Sparrows as the clock ticks away here in the third quarter. Nice of our teammate Fox Highwind to be 
you know, stealing all the Reese's eggs and not giving us any. I, I guess he's going in the doghouse this week. No, no passes for Fox Highwind in week 12 confirmed. They will all go to the stud tight end for the Aztecs. Out route is complete down to the bottom as the final seconds of the third quarter have ticked away. So four yard gain second down and six is how the fourth quarter will come to a start. Three quarters in the books. One remains. Sparrows 10, Nightwings 40. And what has been a somewhat lopsided ball game. You could, say, you could say a one-sided affair. Absolutely you could, Matt, but I wasn't going to. But I can always count on you to bring commentary into the booth that I was going to leave out. A <laughs> penalty on the play. Colin Hart looks like he was able to get first down yardage. But a holding penalty will take this one back. Fox now Island in the chat says that uh, he's he eating stole his son's, his son's candy. Son's, stealing his son's candy. That's, that's just wrong. He, he's, but, he better mind his P's and Q's to the playoffs now after hearing that. <laughs> I mean, stealing candy from children is just about as low as you can go. But, you know. High snap for Tyree going deep down the middle, tipped and oh. almost picked off. Thought we were going to see our first interception of the ball game. Now it's Sioux Falls' favorite down, like third. Yeah, third down once again, but this time it's not a third down and four that Colin Hart can easily convert. A third down and 16, that holding penalty absolutely killing him because yeah, it yeah. looked like Colin Hart had actually gotten the first down on that carry, but instead sends him 10 yards backwards. Setting up a second and 16. That pass was incomplete. Third and 16. Tyree going for the first down. Tipped and incomplete. Nick Kindler swatting that one down. Another third down goes unconverted. And the Sparrows will have to punt. And, you know, Matt, at what point um, at what point do you have to go for it even on fourth and 16? <sighs> or do you just throw in the towel? I, mean, I don't know. You're down 40 to 10. I, I, you never want to give up, but tough because Sioux Falls, you know, they're eliminated from the playoffs with a loss. And so what do you have to lose? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean... At least try to play spoiler. You know, I mean, Denver gets the number one overall seed with a win today. So, you know, you could try to prevent it, but yeah, I mean, that's... I mean, honestly, it's crazy talk. Go for, going forward on 4th and 16 from your own 27, I don't think there's really almost any situation that that would happen except for... Uh, oh. oh, well... <laughs> Someone uh, got a little bit sidetracked there. A <laughs> little, little, little Try, spiller special. Trying to make a little too much happen there, Riley. Quintero, the rookie with the return. You can visit the all-new SFL League website at simulationfl.net for info on how to create a player. To join our community, the league, and the teams that play in it, there's links to apparel, helmets, and a comprehensive history about Matt Wilson and the SFL. It's over 1,400 games, and it's thousands of other players who have hit the virtual field. The SFL puts the fan in fantasy. And Giacomo Jones puts the ball into his hands. Quarterback comparison. Miller and Tyree having somewhat different nights tonight. I don't think he put the ball into his hands. I think Miller threw it to him. Like, I mean, you could throw the ball to yourself and catch it. No, he watched it. Watched it go into his hands, Matt. That's oh, how the receiver – that's, that's, yeah. See, you don't understand how – us uh, receiving core members get it done. It's not It's not all up to you quarterbacks. You know, we have to look the ball into our hands and make sure we get that secure catch. He uh, he brought it into his hands quite successfully. McChesney getting another first down run. He's been doing that all ball game long. First down and 10 now from their own 48. See, the quarterbacks are, are the divas of the league, Matt, and that's really what the uh, the problem is here is, is you just think it's all up to you, but it's really, I mean, have you seen your passes? Have you seen the way that you throw? Hey, I mean... I, I love the game-winning drive, okay? Be quiet. Yeah, but, I mean, your passes uh -oh. go end over end. It's ridiculous. McChesney Ooh. gets it up into Sioux Falls territory. Ooh, a little slow to get up this time after another 
punishing hit by A.J. Levy. Yeah, McChesney looking a little slow, but, I mean, he's run a quarter of a mile. So I'd be a little gassed, too. Second down and two now. Offset eye in the backfield. Barrow's defensive line shifting to the right. McChesney hitting the backfield, but able to burst through and get another first down. 240 yards now, Matt, on 19 carries. Yeah, McChesney, he just, the story of the game of Sioux Falls sometimes catches McChesney in the backfield, Mike, but then he just breaks a tackle and get in the air. Just hurts your soul pretty much. First down and 10 now from the 36. Miller in the gun. Miller throws this one over the middle. Giacomo Jones with the catch. 26 completions now from Miller. That is Giacomo Jones' eighth reception. Just base zone coverage. Finds... Whoever's open, Miller does. And again, Miller not facing any adversity as far as protection. So just calm in the pocket, delivers a nice, easy ball. And, uh, you know, Sioux Falls doesn't know, you know, what to play. Do you play the run or do you play the pass? Miller's going to pass on this one. Gets it out to McChesney. Immediately turns up field and then brought down by Terrell Davis. But another nine-yard game. Matt, did you see, uh, you know, Fox Highwind confirms, you know, that basically uh, you are just uh, kind of throwing the ball up for grabs. It's going to go into someone's hands. Whose hands? That's another story. Hey, so. hey, hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> the, the, the great Minnesota Vikings had, you know, Cunningham did the same thing. They worked out pretty well with Moss and Carter. So be quiet, Fox, and, and go to the bench. McChesney oh. into the end zone from 12 yards out. Getting another one on the board, 46 to 10. Have mercy. That play has worked every time, Mike. Right? That off tackle run. We've seen it before, you know, have some success, but not this much. I mean, look at that. He just could have run a marathon and scored. There's nobody there. And again, great blocking. You've got the guards are just cleaning up. Kramer Jackman on for another extra point try. Met the over under 47.5. We might see oh. Denton break that by themselves. 40. Yeah, they're going to be. Go, just, they'll be a half, half point away. I don't know how they're going to score a half point, but if there's if there's a will, there's a way. Denver or, might be able to. Or, or a relative. <laughs> Jackman getting the ball teed back up now. Like every team has a Kobayashi Maru game, and this is who falls. Ah, the Kobayashi Maru. There it, you it, go. It, it, it's how you respond to that no win scenario. That's what matters. I knew you'd bring up another Star Trek reference at some point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Levy takes this one one yard deep in the end zone. Hasn't been able to get much done in the return game. He's had to kneel down about half of them, especially when uh, Jackman's been kicking the other direction with the wind. Levy gets this one out to the 24-yard line, and Tyree will come back out onto the field. Should be a backup watch pretty soon. I I would expect uh, Vega to pull the starters any minute. Tyree hands the ball off to Hart. Hart goes forward for a gain of eight, puts him over 100 yards, averaging five and a half per carry. a good good run for Hart and uh you know just just keep playing that's all you can do just try to keep making positive plays and someone says how many right. Star Trek references can, can I make Dude, don't don't challenge me on that <laughs> the entire commentary could be Star Trek I, we, got, we got six I minutes really to go we mind. don't we don't we don't want to go where no man has gone before <laughs> oh Matt uh my this, goodness Hart this, with a first down carry up to 36 that far or no farther. <laughs> yeah, see, he went this far, yeah. no farther. Yeah, 
and, and Denver, now Denver's going to make them make pay for pay. what they've done. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see who makes first contact on the next hit here. Tyree in the gun. Steps up, throws on the run, and that one Oof. is incomplete. Matt, Tyree's only had six completions in the ball game. Yeah. it's I mean, six completions. Again, how do you win with six completions and converting, like, what, one third down? It's just it's an unfortunate situation. Fox Highwind trying to give us trivia now, Matt. I know you know this one. Which Star Trek was the first and uh, the first one directed by a cast member? First contact, job for three. Commander Riker himself. Cake. Got to make it more difficult than that, Fox. Just keep stealing your child's candy. That, that, They're down that, that, question, that question's like taking candy from a baby. Absolutely. Hashtag yawn. Tyree in the gun now on third down and nine. Tyree throws over the middle, oh. and that one is oh. tipped. Tipped oh. again and incomplete. Still not picked, but also not complete. A.J. Warren, the intended target. Been targeted twice now, Matt. Both of them have fallen down into the turf. Fourth down to nine. Sector 6 is the official apparel provider of the Simulation Football League. You can visit Sector6Apparel.com or our website at SimulationFL.net for replica team jerseys and completely customized jackets, flags, T-shirts, and more that help each team stand out from their opponents. You can get the gear that fans wear with Sector 6 and the SFL. Order your Mexico City Aztecs number 83 Dags jersey. I know you all want to. Or the number 18 oh, the Wiska Lafouche jersey. I ordered one today. The old clipper. A little clipping penalty against the Night Wings. And the crowd does not like that. Skeeter yeah. Baja, the ha backup halfback, the one uh, called for that clip. And yes, uh, McChesney is now uh, out of the game. Sioux Falls can rejoice. Miller hands the ball off to McChesney, who's got 251 oh. yards. Excuse me, I, I thought I had mistaked Ari Mills for McChesney. Silly me. It happens. Yeah. So second down and 10 now. Starters still in for the Nightwings offense. And a flag on the play, but McChesney able to get forward for about a gain of eight. Check the flag. Neutral zone infraction, number 90, defense, the penalty. And the penalty is declined. So with that eight-yard gain, McChesney uh, now will have, what, 259 yards on the day. Previous franchise single game record was set by Jason German of the San Antonio Vicarios back in Season 9, Week 12, with 255 yards. Jared McChesney now eclipsing that. 259 yards. And probably some more. Now he'll he'll lose once to 258 yards. That might be his last carry of the ball game, as I would expect backups to be in for any further possessions. And uh, you know, Matt, it looks like uh, it looks like you were wrong. Oh, well, what do you mean? Oh, well, I mean, how else do you say it looks like you were wrong? Uh, the About search what? for Spock. The search for Spock was directed by Leonard by Nimoy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah oh, and yeah. then you're. You're giving them all sorts of grief. You're, you're right. You're right, Nimoy. And then Shatner did, uh, did his own uh, thing. It didn't turn out too well. <laughs> you're right. I, 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 way. I thought he said the only. That's what tripped me up. Maybe I misread the question. 
Well, I think he said the first. Hmm. Which uh, which Star Trek was the first one directed by a cast member? First, okay, first one, yeah. Well, that's yeah. you know the funny thing. That's the only way they could get Nimoy to come back as Spock for Star Trek Three. Otherwise, he was out. Well, that, that would have been, been awkward. That's why he was resurrected, because so, Nemo got a chance to direct. But anyway, it's back to the game. <laughs> so, sorry, SFL fans. <laughs> Tyree with the completion. Goes into the hurry-up. Tyree's going to oh! run and slide down at the 36-yard line. Not, not, not quite uh, the run we saw, man, from... Uh, the Vaqueros in that one game. Ooh. Tyree, quick pass over the middle. That one is incomplete. Once again, trying to hit A.J. Warren. And uh, Highwind says the final frontier was the one Shatner directed. Uh, we, 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 we know. We, uh, we, don't, we don't speak of. Like, Star what does God need with a starship? <laughs> I, I, I don't. No, you never really found out. Well, it wasn't God, so it's, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Maybe he's not out there, Mike. Maybe he's right in here. Human heart. It could be. Let's see what happens on third down and three, Matt. Short drop for Tyree. He looks and throws, and that one is incomplete. Benny Beasley, the intended target. And it'll be a fourth down with 3.34 to go in the ball game. We'll see what they decide I, I to do here. I hope I don't here. get fired after this game for too much Star Trek trivia. You are absolutely fired after the game, Matt. That's not even a question. Oh, it's a good way to go. <laughs> My own Kobayashi Maru. <laughs> Fourth down and three, and they're going to go for it. Tyree looking, gets this one out to Hart. Can Hart get first oh! down? Oh! And with the stiff arm. Pushing Deontay Phillips down into the turf, the backup linebacker. Gets the first down and moves the chains for the Sparrows. First down and 10 now from the 28-yard line. Colin Hart taking a breather. Let's see some actual some throwing. Tyree needs some completions. He's got eight, eight for 20, only 40% completion percentage in this one, 129 yards. See if he can add to it here. Tyree throws over the middle. He does indeed add on to the completion total and the yardage total, getting all the way down to the nine-yard line. Tyree looks towards the end zone. That one is incomplete. Diving on it like it was a fumble, but it was not. El Dilpre Sr., Trying to get the uh, recovery there. Second down and goal now from the nine. And look at the fleet go against the Predators. 20 to six. It's a bit of a surprise. Well, yeah. Portland, they've they've won a few, or uh, I think three games this season so far. They're having a, having a little better season than their inaugural season in uh, 15. Going to the moon, man, and next year. Four wide receivers out route down to the bottom. That one is hauled in. A.J. Warren finally getting a catch. His fourth target, first reception, good for a six-yard gain. Third down and goal now from the three. Portland currently three and seven in third place in the Pacific Division, looking for win number four over Charleston, that game in the fourth quarter. Four receivers on the field on third down. Tyree towards the end zone. Touchdown, Colin Hart. Putting some more points on the board for Sioux Falls. I think, Mike, is that their first point since the first quarter? Well, the last a... time that they scored, Matt, was when Colin Hart ran 45 yards into the end zone. That was, uh, I believe that was in the second quarter. It was uh, their second to last possession of the half. Well, you know, as Stained would say, it's been a while. It has. It's, it's definitely been a while. I'm not going to start singing, but five, five, uh, excuse me, six possessions in between those two scoring drives uh, where most of them were punts. Uh, four of them, five of them were punts, and then one uh, they just ran out of time at the half. But uh, it's been a large part 
of the problem in this ball game, Matt. They are uh, now two of eleven on third down, only converting eighteen percent of them. They've had eleven drives; they've only scored on three of them. Sixty-four offensive plays to hey. Denver's sixty-four offensive plays. They don't believe in the no-win scenario, Mike. It's onside kick time. Absolutely, Maxwell Falk has this one teed up for an onside kick. They're only down by thirty. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> easily. It, it bobbled for a second. It did indeed. It, it moved, Pete, but not Pete enough. Mitchell, Pete Mitchell with the recovery. And we'll see who comes out. The Jack water quarterback boy? for the Night Wings. Might, might as well get the water boy and the towel boy in the game. Like, you know, you don't want to, the backup, sir, just in case you need him for the offseason. <laughs> or for, for, the, for the playoffs, I mean. And the ball is handed off to McChesney still. What are they? What? Up by 30 points. They want to add on more, but all they're doing is eating into McChesney's yard total as he's lost two yards now on his last two carries. Um, he's only got the franchise record now by two yards. Oh, so if geez. he loses any more, <laughs> I mean, you know, why don't you quit while you're ahead? Uh, you know, uh, looks, I just see Brandon Perna in the huddle. Did the uh, backups come in now, perhaps? It looks like Perna's under center. I think Vega finally. Uh... See who gets the handoff here. Is that, uh, is that Skeeter? Skeeter off to the races? Yeah. Yes, indeed it is. Skeeter Baja. Skeeter, Skeeter still got carry. six. Yep, Skeeter. Well, Skeeter picked up seven on that one. Oh, seven. <laughs> oh, right. Vega, Vega in the chat. He's going to lose the record. Uh, ju well, just in Vegas, time, just Vegas, in time. Vegas, stop smoking, stop smoking your cigarettes. You know, get your starters <laughs> off the field. Two minutes to go in this one. Forty-seven to seventeen. The Night Wings well out in front over the Sparrows. Brandon Perna under center. You know what's weird, Mike? Every time that music plays, I'm like, oh, time for a break. And the players just keep playing. It's, it's unusual. Oh, no breaks for you, Matt. Skeeter Baja wrapped up after only a gain of one in Sioux Falls. They called Mer a timeout, Matt. Well, you know. Fourth down and three. They've uh, they've held the night wings. They're going to get the ball back. They want to see Jackman's leg. It is good looking. So I hear. Well, Jackman on for a 52-yard field goal try. We saw 51. I think the 51-yarder was with the win, though, Matt. This one's against the win, so maybe a little bit more difficult. But we'll see uh, We'll see hard. what he can do. He hasn't missed one yet this season. Hopefully no commentator's curse will get him. Nope, it's up and good. Just keeps adding him well, on. Now with over 30 rolling, field goals rolling. on the season, Matt. That's crazy. Five field goals today in this game. All good. That was the longest one from 52. 31 of 31 on the season. So, Mike, Denver did beat the over. Indeed they did. 50 points for Denver. That alone puts them over the uh, over-under. 67 crazy. combined points. My goodness. A high-scoring game just, uh, you know, unfortunately for Sioux Falls, it was been mainly Denver putting up those points. AJ Levy getting that one out to the 23-yard line. And the funny thing is, we've seen games in the LFL won with only 17 points. I remember like there was a six to nine in one time. So, but this this Denver offense has just looked unstoppable today. And again, it's got to strike fear in the hearts of all the other SFL teams, you know, they got to be looking at film. How do we look at Denver's one loss? How did that work? What did they do? Tyree pump fake throws over the middle and that one is caught to go into the hurry up. Pass was completed up to the 37 yard line. Another throw over the middle. That one is also caught. Hauled in by A.J. Warren. Tyree floats this one a bit, and it's batted down and incomplete. So, Mike, Denver lost in week six 
at home against the Houston Hyenas, 38-23. to 23. Interesting. Well, Houston did something right. Yeah, that's definitely the game to look at if you uh, have a, especially a playoff game against Denver coming up. You know, one of only losses uh, at home. That's that's unusual. And the Ma- San Diego Mavericks, uh, week eight, it was only a three point win for the Night Wings. Another game to look at. Not trying to give opponents any uh, fuel. I'm sure they know, but this game, not so much. Tyree up to the top. Gunner Lewis with the catch. Good for a gain of six. Stepping out of bounds with a minute 14 to go. Don't miss a minute of heart-pounding SFL action next weekend, the final weekend of the regular season. Coverage on For the Fans begins early Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Next Level Sports will have SFL action on Saturday from 4.30 to 9 Eastern. As that pass is complete over the middle, going back into the hurry-up. Final block on Sunday from 2.30 to 5. Tyree throws complete once again inside the red zone. First down and 10 now from the 19. Stay tuned to SFL alerts on simulationfl.net and on social media for matchup times and dates to be finalized this evening. Wow. Tyree sacked. Brought down by Des Troyer, second sack of the ball game. Tyree throws, the ref eats it. Pass is complete, third down and two. That's a bad time to eat it, Ross, in a 50-17 to 17 game. Save yourself. <laughs> Stay out of the way. Let it happen. Tyree, quick pass over the middle. That one is incomplete. The you SFL might... on Next Level Sports, and for the fans, we put the fan in fantasy. So it should be a great Week 12 slate next week, Matt. The uh, times... Times are going to be all over the board, so make sure you definitely do uh, stay tuned to the SFL alerts on uh, SFL simulationfl.net, social media, our Discord channel. Uh, make sure you keep your eyes peeled for the S- the uh, Week 12 schedule. It's going to be a little bit different. Tyree steps up, throws on the run, and gets a touchdown pass into the end zone. Another one for Colin Hart. He has scored all three of the Sparrows touchdowns. Two through the air, one on the ground. Don't call it a comeback, Mike. Here comes another onside kick. (laughs) Here it comes. So Colin Hart, I mean, really, really, he's had a a decent game himself. 20 carries, 110 yards, rushing touchdown, long of 45, three catches through the air, 22 yards, and two out of those three catches were touchdowns. So as far as uh, individual performances go, Colin Hart having a decent one. Jared McChesney, on the other hand, having a record-setting performance. His franchise record. Extra point is up, and it's good. Denver with a 50-24 to lead. And Maxwell Falk getting ready for a uh, another onside try with 14 seconds to go. Drum roll, please. Inside kick is recovered. And with 12 seconds, we should just see the victory formation from the Nightwings to bring this game to a close. Matt Denver will improve to 10 and 1 on the season. Sioux Falls will fall to 3 and 7. Next up for the Denver Nightwings. They will be here at home next week against the Las Vegas Fury. Second time out called by Sioux Falls. Las Vegas 7-4 in second place in the West Division. Looking to uh, get their eighth win. Yeah, get their eighth win of the season. If they can bring down the Mighty Nightwings, Sioux Falls... They will end at home, hosting the third place West Division Arizona Scorpions, currently at five and six. Sioux Falls burns their final timeout with 10 seconds to go. One more kneel down 
We'll tick this one away. So hard to believe only one week left of regular season action here in season 16. And playoffs will be here before you know it. Minor League Season 3 will get underway. And uh, next thing you know, Matt, Season 17 will be here. The next SFL convention down in Houston will be here. And uh, we'll have all sorts of fun throughout the rest of 2021 as the SFL just continues to roll on. And this game has now come to a close. 74 points scored in this one. The Sparrows lose it 24 to the Denver Nightwings 50. As we head into the final stats and highlights, Matt, your final thoughts in this one. I mean, just domination by Denver. A lot of those Sioux Falls stats a little inflated for the backups in at the end of the game. But, I mean, there's the man right there that just drives this team. McChesney just running over people, hard to bring down. And if, if teams that are going to you know want to beat Denver, they got to stop that off-tackle run. They ran that four or five times and went 20 plus yards. Here it is again, Mike. I, I, I rest my case. <laughs> Look at a block by uh, Ari Mills. And, uh, and again, Josh Miller, a great day passing the ball, too. No turnovers either. So, I mean, how do you beat a team, Mike, that's efficient passing the ball and great running the ball and doesn't turn the ball over? And the defense is just suffocating. I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how this team you know, matches up with others in the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. Josh Miller, 27 to 34. 274 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, almost 80% completion percentage, triple digit quarterback rating. Fantastic game from Miller. Leading receiver was Giacomo Jones. They threw him the ball eight times. He caught all eight of them, averaging over 10 yards per reception. Had a long of 21, 82 yards through the air for Giacomo Jones. Jared McChesney, if he's not the player of the game, I will be shocked. 24 carries, 257 record setting yards, two touchdowns. Also added on another 43 yards through the air, 300 all purpose yards, three all purpose touchdowns. Crazy game by McChesney. The defense, no, nobody stands out stat wise, Matt, but they just smothered the Sparrows. They, they would not allow a lot of big runs, they only allowed. Colin Hart to get one long run on the day. Kramer Jackman, 5-5 five five on field goal tries, long of 52. But, yeah, Jared McChesney with his uh, amazing performance both on the ground and through the air. That wraps up this one, Matt. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League. For Matt Wilson, Gerald Smith, our commissioner and producer Cameron Irvine, I am Mike Dagg saying thank you for joining us and have a great night, everybody. We'll see you once again week 12.